Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to episode 5. Today it's Return of the PSM. That's right, that's the title of today's uh, interview. And uh, before we had uh, Mr. Sivarajan, before that we had you, uh, who's Socialist Alternative. But today PSM comes to our show in the form of Bermuda Socialist Youth Chief, Mr. Arvind. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, again, I want to shout out to you uh, for making the arrangements, connect, uh, connecting us. Mm -hmm. So how's life been uh, post PRN 2023? What's been going on? It's been you? good. Actually, every single election we have, we are more motivated in okay. the end. We've not tasted much electoral success, but... Uh, it invigorates our grassroots okay. and uh, our members. Okay. Um, it brings everyone together. Elections are always kind of a happy occasion, whatever happens. Okay. Because we all come together, we all work together, people cook for us, you know, um, people spend their time. Uh, and all of that is appreciated amongst all of our members. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of like refocuses us to work harder for the future. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Arul, Mr. Arul, mm -hmm. uh, recently came on an article in the Star I was reading uh, where he mentioned that uh, a lot of the elections, in fact, the flags are actually prepared by volunteers mm -hmm. and uh, you have a lot of support from the grassroots from people for the party. It must be nice. Uh, but before we get into PSM and politics, sure. let's, uh, let's get to know you, sir. Let's get to know you. So you've been in uh, uh, PSM for six years, you were saying? Before? Five years. Five years. Mm -hmm. So uh, what made you choose uh, the Socialist Party. Right. So I was studying in Manchester, okay. uh, Red Brick University, uh, a lot of socialist roots there as well. Uh, and when I was exploring um, about politics, I wasn't into politics, actually. I am more of a researcher. I wanted to work in a lab. I still do, if, I, if mm. there's ever a chance. Mm. Um, but uh, when I looked into the world as it is, the, I thought there must be something that we can do uh, to change it so when I looked into politics I was I first thought I was a libertarian okay yeah um, and then I had a libertarian friend there and he was adamant in saying that I wasn't okay and he said you know all of the values that you said that you care about um, welfare you know uh, greater increase of uh, uh, support for workers and power for workers uh, you sound like a socialist mm. I was like oh, okay I'm a socialist and then I looked uh, around in the web for um what parties are socialists in Malaysia? I saw, I found two. One is uh, uh, DAP Socialist Youth, which is hilarious right now, um, and uh, the Socialist Party. So, um, and then I got a reading about uh, Dr. Jay Kumar's um, extensive articles and research, all of the things that he talked about. Yeah, he's in, also authored a few books as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of people in PSM have authored multiple books. Yeah. Uh, and when I, I read through a lot of the positions that he had uh, explained in parliament I was um, attracted to PSM. I still was of two minds uh, because I came to visit PSM's office and then it was a shop lot. Yes. You know. First uh, floor shop lot, if I'm not mistaken. First floor shop yeah, lot. Yeah. I'm proud of it now because yeah. it shows our roots. But back then it was intimidating. Mm -hmm. you know, I've never seen a, 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 a HQ looking like that. And then I went and talked to Sivarajan for a bit. I was still of two minds. Uh, and then I applied to join uh, PKR mm -hmm. uh, as an intern. And then I applied to join PSM as an intern at the same time. PSM got back to me. PKR didn't. So it's uh, <laughs> PKR's loss. PKR's uh, loss, loss, yeah, yes, definitely. definitely. definitely yeah. I mean, to be fair, back then I was an Azmin fanboy. So uh, Azmin Ali? Uh, yeah, I'm from Gomba. You know, he was my boy. My he was, uh, yeah, I was thinking... Uh, Anwar should step down for Azmin. Yeah, I, even now I think that too. Yeah, yeah of course. I think uh, <laughs> Anwar is not ready. Uh, I mean, yeah, he should start. But anyway, we'll, we'll anyway, get to that. Yeah, yeah we'll so, get to that. Um, so I wrote that in my application. I was like, I'm very proud of what Azmin Ali has done. Maybe that's why I didn't get in line. Maybe, you know? maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, PSM got back to me. I joined them as an intern. Uh, and I fell in love with the party because of all of the grassroots work that they've done and all of the things that I got to do in my short two months as an intern there before I started work. And then right after I finished my internship, I joined PSM. Okay. And in PSM, there's a, there's a saying, uh, this is a one-way path. Okay. You get in, you cannot get out. Okay. And five years later, I haven't gotten out. Gotten so. out, yeah, because you can't, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so uh, uh, interesting. You are a, you were a libertarian, and now the, then you joined PSM. Uh, very different uh, ideologies, mm-hmm. right? But do you subscribe to that sort of thinking in politics, whereby if you look at the US, you have a situation where you you especially in US culture, American culture, where they like to pigeonhole people, mm. right? It's either you're a Democrat or you're a Republican. Why can't you be both? Why can't you you be libertarian about some principles and conservative about the uh, others? Small correction. I thought I was libertarian. Okay. I didn't understand what libertarianism was. Okay. So I was always okay. a socialist. I just didn't realize okay. it, basically. <laughs> <You're> a- <laughs> yeah. So I think... Um, a closeted socialist. A closeted socialist, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people in Malaysia, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, when you... Okay, la, 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 we get into specifics on uh, Democrat and Republican. Um, there's a great saying that says, uh, even America only has one party, but in American extravagance, uh, typical American extravagance, they have two versions of the same party. Yes, so, yes, definitely. Uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't say Democrats and Republicans are so different from each mm-hmm. other. So I wouldn't be surprised if there are people who are Democrat in some principles and mm-hmm. Republican in others, even in the Democratic Party or in the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, it's very important to know where you stand in politics. Uh, and more important than that is uh, understanding the uh, logical basis of your, um, of your stances. And in a lot of socialist parties, uh, in PSM as well, we have we are very thorough in our understanding of the world. So we look at what has happened before. Uh, we look at uh, the analysis, comparing different types of analysis. Uh, of course, we are a Marxist party, so mm-hmm. we uh, take the Marxist line uh, because it makes sense. Mm. Uh, not because we are Pentakso Marx, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, but uh, we know that Marx has made. Uh, a lot of um, uh, correct analysis mm-hmm. because it is evident from um, uh, the history of the world. But uh, certain mistakes that uh, Marx had pointed out were later on expanded upon by people like Lenin, people like Mao, mm-hmm. and then uh, uh, recently we have um, 21st century socialists, feminists, have brought in all of these different elements that have become Marxism as a, as a, as a whole, basically. Mm-hmm. So... It's good to know where you are coming from. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one thing. You have an ideological base. Uh, but it's also good to back up that ideological base with a certain set of logic uh, that uh, goes into it. Okay. You, you, interesting that you talk about Mao, you talk about uh, Lenin and mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, Karl Marx and all this. Um, unfortunately, this, this raises a pretty interesting uh, 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 conundrum for mm-hmm. PSM. Uh, in the past, when you all ran under PKR's flag, you actually were successful. Mm. Dr. Jacob Ma actually was in parliament. Um, then when you all decided to run solo, especially in the last PRN, mm. uh, basically uh, parties like MUDA and PSM were, in, 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 in a lack of a better term, wiped out, right? So is there a problem in terms of, the P, uh, in, in terms of PSM's PR? Mm. Because we all know and we understand in fact i i even said this multiple times in my chat with uh, with sivarajan that uh, we all know that psm does good for people right regardless of race and religion they 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 fight for for people's rights because it's a class party but is it hard for people to accept psm you feel simply because of the pr ex- aspect of it mm. there are multiple reasons why People respect us and people also reject us. Mm-hmm. And people who respect us even reject us even. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I think PR is one part of it. But you have to look at, um, you have to look at resources. Mm-hmm. You can make anything appealing these days. <laughs> so if you look at uh, Parikata National, uh, in my seat, Gomba Satya, Hilmani Dam won. Mm-hmm. And then the, uh, in the seat that is next to it, Hulu, Hulu Klang, Asmin Ali won. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes these people. Mm. But the greater narrative had won through, basically. And, and, and what was that narrative? And the greater narrative for Perikatan, of course, was to, in Selangor, uh, there, was a stray, uh, there was a strong sense of rampas balik Selangor, as in like take back Selangor mm. from um, PH, PH okay. which is hilarious because like both PN, uh, P, PAS and Bersatu, PAS was of course part of PR, yeah. Bersatu was, I don't think, ever part of, uh, no, oh, it 2018 it was yeah. lah. But um, pushing that aside, there's no that doesn't make sense. But of course, the larger narrative is racial lah in mm-hmm. Perikatan. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to PSM, we have a lack of resources. That is an obvious fact. If you look at uh, the Facebook advertisements uh, that have been bought by Perikatan and uh, Pakatan, Pakatan Harapan page itself was 200,000 ringgit. Mm. 
uh, of Facebook ads alone. Okay. Perikatan one ad was fifteen thousand ringgit. We don't have that kind of money. Our mm. ad uh, budget runs in maybe less than a thousand, if if that. Mm. So we have a PR um, challenge in that sense. Mm. Uh, whether the packaging of uh, PSM, you know, uh, whether the baggage of uh, socialism, you know, Mao, uh, Lenin, etc. I think um, I think we can package it mm. actually, uh, and people are more understanding, uh, especially these days where you can Google things, right? So um, I do not think that we have a PR challenge in that sense, but uh, we always lose out to the greater narrative because of. Uh, Many other factors, as I said before, one is resources. The other one is we only contested in so few seats. Mm. You know, we only contested in four seats mm. in six states. In only one state, we contested, and out of the fifty-six seats, we contested four seats. We understand that people are apprehensive of, of voting for us. The people who support us ask, "You cannot form the government. Why? Why should I vote for you?" Mm. So we need to understand that uh, that challenge and rise to it. So I see that as a more of a primary um, uh, challenge for us, rather than changing um, anything fundamental about but, our. But but interesting, you 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 bring up about the seats that you have contested in because uh, in, initially, uh, previously when I was talking to Sivarajan as well, uh, unfortunately because of lack of time, I could not ask him this question. But one of the things that uh, was a point of concern for me when it comes to PSM's mm. choice of the seats, for example, Sivarajan. Uh, he was contesting in Kota Damansara, which is 60 over percent Malay. The the problem in Malaysia, and 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 I think you could say most of part of the world is race plays a part in voter choice, mm-hmm. right? It does play a part. We cannot deny that. Is this one of the reasons? Do you think again? Uh, could this uh, lack of support for PSM also uh, be a resultant of a disconnect between ideology and reality? For example, placing Sivarajan in a place that is predominantly Malay, when previously it was won by Dr. Nasir, mm. who is a Malay, mm. wouldn't putting a Malay candidate in Kota Damansara have served you all better as opposed to Sivarajan? So, so mm. my, my question is: Is this disconnect also one of the reasons why you guys are not winning? I think uh, if we play to the to the narrative lah, if we play to the racial narrative that is in Malaysia, then possibly we can. Uh, we uh, find success, but for PSM, we are above that. We don't want to play racial politics, and that is a difficult decision to take. You see, mm-hmm. because even the most progressive parties, quote unquote, in Malaysia, your PKRs, your DAPs, they play racial politics. Yeah, everyone does all the time. Mm. Uh, I mean, you saw Lim Guaning's uh, what do you call that uh, impromptu speech, mm-hmm. and then uh, there's uh, one speech by Kula saying that he only eats in Indian restaurants. Mm. in uh, negri sembilan but uh, so of course playing to the to the congregation is something that we can do and we may find success into it but if you wanted to do that better and psm doesn't exist and we just join dap or pkr because if that's the kind of politics that we want to bring for us we have to be an example of class politics mm-hmm. That doesn't mean we just put in anyone anywhere, or that doesn't mean we find Malay seats and we deliberately put a, a, a non-Malay candidate. That means we put people who have worked there. Mm-hmm. Sivarajan has worked there for many yes, years under Dr. Nasir as well. Under Dr. Nasir, yeah. as well. I was a political secretary mm-hmm. for Dr. Mm-hmm. Dr. Nasir, but even before that, he was you know, the I think the the, the majlis, right? The yeah, majlis. he was in the majlis there. But even before that, you know, like uh, Subang uh, back then it was Subang lah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Subang. Was uh, one of the first PSM um, uh, branches to open, you know, and this is a struggle of 30 years. You have to understand where we come from and we pick our candidates. Our candidates are local activists, and they, there is a requirement by PSM that you have to be working in your constituency for a set number of years before you even qualify to be chosen as a candidate. Then you have to like be chosen by the branch. The central committee must. Uh, approve, etc., etc. So, our candidate selection goes is very rigorous, and race is not actually part of uh, part of wh- uh, who we choose where basically. But if you were to tell me if uh, Malay would have uh, gotten more votes in a certain area, maybe. But Professor Darren got uh, a respectable number of votes in uh, Dengkil, that is sixty over percent Malay as well. Mm. So, 
we have to we looking at trying to change politics lah. Understood. Mm. But uh, speaking of that, uh, let's. Uh, I, I just want to go back to a point that you talked about mm. in the previous uh, uh, question of mine. Uh, I was going through your TikTok, and uh, you uh, uh, there are videos where you're pretty much uh, critical mm. of the PH government, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, and all that. And this is a common theme. Uh, in fact, even in uh, a few of uh, most of the online uh, critique that PSM has is always targeted at either Datuk Sri Anwar or PMX or, 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 or PH. Why haven't you all criticized PN so much? I, is this uh, perhaps you guys are looking to join P, the, the PN coalition so you don't want to anger <laughs> that, 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 that coalition? No, I mean, no. Uh, yeah. we, uh, we categorically reject PN. Okay. There, there, there's not even a conversation on that. The, we have actually criticized PM. Actually, uh, uh, P, uh, PN. Sorry, uh, I have a video saying reject PN, join PSM. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you call it? reject racial politics? And we've always uh, said that as a as a as a most important thing that we need to to emphasize. Sometimes uh, it seems like we are criticizing Pakatan so much because we are so disappointed. These people are our friends. Mm. You know, we've been in Pakistan for many years. Yep. All of these reforms, we fought for them too. You know, like we were at the Bersia rallies. Mm. We were caught by the police. Arul was uh, caught by the police, I think, under sedition. Or, sedition, uh, yeah. Uh, for defending Anwar. For saying that uh, Anwar's uh, second sodomy case was politically motivated. Of course. You're saying, these are our friends, you know. And we look, when you see our friends, go back on their promises. You know, like make these very silly attempts at like appeasing uh, what do you call that the fascist crowd. Mm. Very disappointed, lah. So we criticize them. When we look at Parikatan, what do we expect? You know, like let's be, let's be honest. What do we expect? Pretty from much the same thing that we've got from BN and Amno. Exactly. Before, so yeah. like when we look at them, like making these racial statements, how many times are we going to like repeat the same thing? Don't make racial politics a thing. Don't make racial politics. We we know. We already know. It's so tiring to like criticize them. Because it is so simple, it is so basic. But when we look at our, uh, let we look at, for example, uh, DAP champion of um, of uh, meritocracy and equality in Malaysia, suddenly uh, talking. <laughs> Your sarcasm is noted. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly talking about I only eat in Indian restaurants, or you know, we go to like uh, impromptu speech saying that you know, like uh, Perikatan is going to come and destroy all your temples. Racial politics. So we criticize, lah. Mm. Don't be, don't be disappointed if people criticize you mm. when you have promised so much and you've delivered nothing. Okay. Well, deliver little. Little, yeah. yeah. Mm. Now, uh, speaking of DAP, uh, of course, uh, recently they have been under the fire uh, for their negative remarks, right? But I want to go uh, closer. I want to dive down to the youth side of things. Mm. So, you are the youth chief, right? And uh, DAP now has recently come up and said, Anthony Lok has said that, look, they, he has commanded the DAP Socialist Youth to become more active in recruitment and, you know, growing their own uh, youth base as well. Mm. Um, where do you stand uh, amongst the youth party alternatives such as DAP Socialist Youth, uh, Kat- uh, Pemuda Amno, you know, Muda even? Mm-hmm. Where do you think the, the PSM's youth stands in all of this? I think we are a very... We're growing um, faster than the party, actually. I would be proud to say. Yeah. Um, but like uh, we are uh, growing and we are becoming more and more uh, diverse. Okay. Uh, and the thing is, uh, recently we took a, we took a tally of all of our active members in Pemuda Socialist, uh, and we found that we have almost fifty percent Malay members. Okay. Which is a huge achievement because that means all of the new members that joined us predominantly were Malay. Mm. Um, and I think when we compare to Uh, other parties, we stand where PSM stands against the other parties. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if we compare uh, Pemuda Socialist with DAP Socialist Youth, we're at the same position as PSM versus uh, DAP, mm-hmm. where we take class politics, we do cases, we are more on the ground. Uh, whereas uh, uh, people like uh, Pemuda Amno, DAP Socialist Youth, etc., 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 play to the congregation mm. and uh, chase that uh, electoral popularity more. Not to say we don't; we also want to win elections. Of course. But uh, our base is elsewhere. Our base is on the grassroots work that we do. Do you do you think that? Uh, I mean, uh, actually, actually, sorry. Before I get mm. into that, uh, you mentioned you you just said that uh, that the youth side of things is growing. Faster than uh, the PSM's membership, right? Uh, which, which, by the way, congratulations Thank on you. that. Um, what do you accredit that to? 
we when i came in the 2018 we had a uh, less of a presence in social media so we really looked into what our appeal is what our base is and then we pushed that through uh, when it came to our social media work so we have more infographics we have a beautiful posters uh, we take uh, we have were more active in taking stances you know writing um, statements uh, especially on very key important topics um, and i think that has appealed to uh, especially uh, urban members it has appealed and in pera we have a pemuda socialist pera are very proud of them actually because they do such great grassroots work they do um uh tuition classes for the marhain the, the the affected youth there they organize people there they take up cases they're way more active in the in the grassroots than than we in slango are and we are trying to emulate that here mm-hmm. and so they have their own uh, thing going on there and that has also uh, attracted uh, as an mm-hmm. appeal for That's the people amazing. around them mm-hmm. so we have this kind of like uh, strategy of focus on both you know like our appeal on social media appeal on media that is one thing that can attract people more in but the reason we attract them in is so that we can pull them into the grassroots work that we do mm-hmm. and when they are in the grassroots work they understand um what is the kind of politics that we are bringing and or what is primary in uh, pushing forward okay now uh, that that uh, that brings me to this point uh, because uh, speaking of what you mentioned about the party socialist muda i'm mean, sorry party pemuda socialist right the, mm. the the in in pera and the things that they have done fantastic work but even today I read an article by uh, Mr. Arul mm. who was talking about the success of uh, the them winning the housing issue in Taman Permata I think yeah. Taman Permata Dunkel. D- D- Dunkel, right mm. but again this is the problem the frustration that I have with PSM because I actually uh, I don't know whether you know this but a while back after I graduated I became a member of PSM oh okay right um, I I don't know whether I still am okay. but I but, but, but I joined and in my few meetings that I have attended um One thing that frustrates me about PSM so much is their lack of promoting their achievements to the public using current media. For mm. example, this type of news what Tamil Nadu will come out in the Star, mm. but nobody reads newspapers anymore. Mm. Nobody checks the Star online anymore. Everyone's on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook. In fact, when I posted the video about uh, uh, my my chat with the Sivarajan, there was a comment one person a comment said oh you know he was congratulating psm for actually becoming more online and showcasing their talents yeah and th- why doesn't psm do this it's it, this is one of the uh, the the things that i feel is hampering their growth because mm. they 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 just don't want to promote what they have done yes you are right sometimes you have to be uh, maybe they don't want to come off as being too uh, you know chest out and yes we've done this and done that but you have to because otherwise the people won't know yeah that's completely correct yeah. um we again this is something that we have worked on actually and we have expanded that's why like uh actually if you look at tiktok uh pomoda socialist tiktok uh, sorry uh, psm tiktok uh has a larger follower base than muda which is hilarious to me <laughs> i'm going to come to that i'm going to come to that <laughs> which is uh, it's just funny because like uh, it really shows the amount of work that we have done actually um we've really expanded on social media we are getting things out uh, we are packaging them nicely uh, again in our infographics and posters so we are learning on uh, on uh, on that as well and we are trying to get it out to as much media as possible the issue that we are facing one is of course resources but that is one side la we can always find resources and we can be think creatively but uh, a lot of the media that um becomes this sort of pool of uh, of of people like your malaysia kinis like your free malaysia todays unfortunately because they are media they need to find ad revenue mm. uh, they do not find us that sexy it's not that we 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 don't write uh, our statements it's not that we don't push it out mm. they don't carry it a lot of the time but come on in in in, in today's world mm. uh that can no longer be a a, a, a sort of a, I, i would say excuse for lack of a better word yeah, yeah, yeah. simply because in the world of new media and the prevalence of new v- media uh you could do it yourself you I could you could you. you could come on on a on on a, mm. on you could you could book a space at KL podcast studio and <laughs> and you could do a show yeah i was asking <laughs> about the rates actually yeah. we might do uh, that as well please but, do please do but that's the thing you see like we have um we have uh, a rule coming out on tiktok uh, mm. every night now mm. basically mm. uh at uh, 12 so catch us there <laughs> uh, uh yeah. we 
that's the thing we are learning as we go okay. basically we did have this problem uh, of uh, our activists being too shy to come out and mm, like uh, talk mm, about their mm. things we recognize that as a as a problem and we are remedying that issue right mm, now mm. so we talk about our achievements a lot more so hopefully we can uh, we can push a lot of the things that we have done out in uh, out forward uh, so that the people who come to this alternative kind of media can actually watch it okay is it i think I think I understand where you're coming from but when you when Malaysia kini carries you it's different uh as when you put out your own thing because we have put out all of our statements on socialist or net and think left or net as well but when Malaysia kini carries you you have that kind of like uh one thing you have uh, a bigger reach and another thing is you have the credibility as well because you no know, a reporter has carried you and we have faced the problem in that in our election campaign the papers that we have called right who to carry our media statement they said buy an ad first and then we will carry you so everybody needs to make money of course mm. i understand that mm-hmm. so when you when you when you think about it as as why we are not there in many spaces around it's a resource issue mm. so we are trying our best to uh, find alternative ways to reach the people lah Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, since you brought up Muda. Yeah. That's an interesting one. Uh because uh like I think in my I've discussed it twice already. Uh with uh, Yuva and Sivarajan. Uh number one, I again I repeat myself for the final time then I'll be resting this statement is the collaboration between PSM and Muda was shocking. It was, yeah. It was shocking. Um and uh I want to ask you considering you are the youth chief mm-hmm. and Muda is a youth party despite them trying to deny this mm. them denying they are a youth party is like DAP saying they are a multicultural party mm. they, come on we, we know the yeah, truth yeah yeah fair why was the Muda tie up required it wasn't required actually okay sorry then let me rephrase why was the Muda collaboration done okay good question I'll give you some history lah some some behind the scenes history. Okay, so let's let's go. We were let's gearing up for PRN uh Selangor actually. We we already decided it was Selangor, we already decided which seats we wanted to contest in. Suddenly Muda got out of uh, uh PH BN Perpaduan let's say, mm-hmm. Perpaduan. And uh, they reached out to us uh, saying that they wanted to form a third force. And we are very happy because like at the end of the day when you look at it we were already at that force we are trying to bring a sort of politics that is different and essentially we have been rejected by well we've been summarily we have summarily rejected perikatan that is one side and mm. uh, we were rejected by ph because they have now worked with bn and did not give us a seat in the previous election mm. okay lah that's the that's the thing that we uh, came up with and when we wanted to look at working with muda we wanted to think about how can this make sense actually like you guys have come out to us we want to form a third force as well we understand that us alone we're not going to be able to push for uh, that at the current moment we need to expand more so right now for this prn what can we do and how does this make sense so we came up with a uh, a few stances that we can agree with each other uh, not playing racial politics is one thing um focusing on the environment is one thing uh uh bringing back local council election is another and then a couple of other things uh that we agreed upon so based on this agreement was this electoral understanding it wasn't a pact it wasn't a coalition so it's not as formal but we are working together for uh a lack of better term the greater good lah basically good, okay. uh against uh, these two massive uh, coalitions that uh we feel cannot carry these um these these uh these things that we wanted to carry because of uh, historically how they have uh, performed i think when you look at pemuda socialists and all of the things that we have said against muda mm. i think we were one of the most vocal critics against muda basically. yes you were but after that we worked together with them on a few cases on the ground uh one case is kampung koskan tambahan in rawang where dr siva from muda who contested in kuala kubaru actually was a phenomenal help on the ground as i say like when you when you look at muda on media they are portrayed in a certain way that a lot of the times is not the same on the ground mm-hmm. you know they are good people good people in all parties but you know these these bunch of young people are good they want to do something good they don't have an ideological stance which makes it challenging for them to understand where uh the analysis needs to come from but their heart is in the right place and we could, we genuinely saw that 
you know mm-hmm. of course they have issues with uh, certain members of the party like uh, i'll just say like vkk raja for example okay and uh, all of the which party muda Muda has an issue with whom? No, no. Muda has issues with certain members having certain stances that are oh within the party. Within itself. the party. Okay, itself. okay, okay. You know, like the whole fat shaming thing against uh, uh, Rajiv uh, that happened on social media. Mm-hmm. Something that we are completely against, by the way. Okay. Um. So they have issues because of that. Uh. Sorry, they have issues like that within within the party. They need to resolve. They have issues within the party. Uh. That recently there have been statements that have come out saying that. the party needs to have party elections and uh they need to join back ph so there's a there's a there's a group that wants to join back ph there's a mm. group that wants to be in the third force mm. all mm. parties have these issues like yeah. it's just that muda the, uh, what do you call that it is more magnified because it is presence. more sensational yeah, basically in media as well yeah but in my opinion after working with muda on these cases i have a better opinion of muda I am still a little bit skeptical on um their lack of ideological stance mm-hmm. but i think uh the sincerity amongst a lot of their members uh has really softened my stance lah unfortunately but uh, i i would say from mm-hmm. from an outsider looking in that mm-hmm. muda's tie up with psm benefits muda way more than it does psm because uh, with with psm they can then piggyback on your on ground activities mm-hmm. and sort of build a political portfolio if you will but uh One of the things why it sort of puzzled me this co- co- this electoral pact or understanding electoral understanding with Muda is that when we talk about race, for example, PSM is very clear we are not an Indian party, we are a multicultural party. But in your tie-ups with PKR and Muda, who are both hyper-capitalist parties, mm-hmm. ultra-capitalist parties, right? Suddenly your stance changes. Mm. Suddenly you're no longer it's 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 okay because for for the greater good. Why this uh, flexibility in in the part of uh, join uh, creating packs with capitalist parties, mm. but not so much when it comes to hey there is a group of Indians, uh, uh, there's a group of voters for example who need representation. No, then then we are very firm that we are not an Indian party. Mm. Why why the difference? It's a very interesting question, actually. There's a lot of it's very loaded, so I'll have to like <laughs> unpack it a bit. So, uh, firstly, don't worry, I can, I can, I can edit. No, no, it's okay. Just, just the good parts. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, uh, firstly, um, I don't agree. Well, I agree that Muda benefits from PSM. That's a whole. That's the definition of a pact, basically, mm. because we benefit them and they benefit us in a certain. Not way. so much PSM, though. I, I, I don't see how PSM because PSM is the more established party. I, I agree, yeah. but I would disagree also because uh, when you go to campaigning. People who have not heard of PSM, they've heard of Muda, so we get a uh, foot in the door for for us to even talk about like our our policies when we say we are in a coalition with Muda. Mm. They are more open to listen. Mm. I've seen that happen, mm. so we've benefited as well. Maybe not in a more obvious sense, mm. but we have benefited as well from uh, our partnership with Muda, as we would have benefited if we had joined uh, PH as well mm-hmm. of the of the broad mass appeal. The other thing that you asked was very interesting. Uh I agree that PH is hypercapitalist. Uh whether Muda is hypercapitalist or not uh, remains to be seen because Come on. it's very Come on. Their members very, are very rich. They are very rich. Yeah, members. Let's yeah. be honest. But you know like people like Ame, mm. you know people like Lokman, people who we have worked with on the ground, mm. I wouldn't categorize them in that way. Mm. You know what Muda is is a, a broad how you say a broad appeal party. Or a big ten party, anything, so long as you want to do good, uh, this this like what do you call a vague notion of good, you are, you can be in Muda. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. So whether they are hyper capitalist or not, or not uh, explicitly, that is a separate thing. But as I've said in many podcasts before, when you don't have an ideology, you are moved by the ideology of the day, which is capitalism. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, they are. They are subsumed within the 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 uh, framework of capitalism. Mm. So in a way, because they are uh, unideological, they somehow support capitalism. Okay. At the end of the day, mm. that is how we see Muda, right? Why we have to work with these people? Okay, we <laughs> contested in four seats. You know, when you are in a party like PSM, uh, you're in a leftist party, and you want to do something that is appealing to a lot of people you have to make certain compromises at certain places at certain times not all the time 
you have to look at your resources. If we could have contested in 56 seats in in Selangor, we would have contested alone. Mm. That is the reality of the situation. But we couldn't. So how do we get uh, the word out? How do we push uh, the narrative forward? What what compromises do we have to do? When we made a pack, sorry, we made a electoral understanding with uh, Muda. Mm. It was explicitly on on five pillars that we restricted it to. We and we did that in a very knowing way mm. because we didn't want to carry the baggage of whatever. Uh, what do you call that uh, possibly capitalist thing uh, muda may have supported all that day. we wanted to focus on these five pillars mm. and we use muda's uh, appeal to push our our marhai narrative okay. yeah you have to it sounds very harsh lah but sometimes you have to look at things as resources you know you have to look at uh, uh, what do you call that uh, certain parties yeah. uh, certain coalitions as resources as like vehicles to get at vehicles to yeah, get yeah, uh, yeah. the the thing forward okay. and if you don't do that no but that's fair that's that's no. this isn't even the game this that is real politics yeah, you know politics, like at the end yeah. of the day you know we're not we're not very nice people at the end of the day you know <laughs> we are we are good people <laughs> but not you very know? nice we use everything that we can mm. you know to push the narrative forward of course you know and muda was just uh, was one of the people who can carry it now after the election if uh, we're having a conversation with them tomorrow actually so i'm sorry sadik uh, we have a conversation with them tomorrow can we be there to record this <laughs> so when we are having the conversation with uh, uh, sadik tomorrow we'll see where they are standing because we they had internal discussions we had internal discussions we see what we can come up with if suddenly we can come up with a beautiful coalition uh, that uh, agrees on so many different things that we may disagree on today then we will take that forward that's just the name of the game mm. you know we wanted to join uh, not join like we wanted to have a a, a partnership with uh, ph in ge15 everybody was welcoming it you know suddenly we want to have a then they are they are i would say they are worse objectively than mm. than muda is mm. at least muda you can make a uh, you can you can you can make a case for them in yeah. certain way but yeah. you know ph has not won in it you know like uh, ph have used uh, racial politics mm. uh why was that partnership what do you call that like uh, more acceptable mm. we have to really soul search and ask ourselves maybe people just don't like muda mm. maybe you people don't like muda so when you look at uh, someone who likes uh, who works with muda I, you know i i i would say based on the comments mm. that i received for that video i asked you are the question and i asked him uh, about muda we were having discussion but based on the comments it's because the general perception i feel is that muda is a sort of like a sleeper cell yeah. uh kind of like a, a a wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing and they are uh behind them people feel that they are either a party by parikatan mm-hmm. or they are mahate's party to still to carry out their agenda so that's the perception and all of this is because of their leader shait sadik mm. whom i'm not a big fan of let me be very honest okay right so i i guess that's why people don't like muda it's possible definitely um uh, whether they are or not a sleeper cell uh we in my my limited understanding of muda with uh, how much we have worked with uh, with them i don't see it mm. you know i see them as a bunch of people who want to do something good and they want to push things forward and because of the lack of ideology what that good is and how to move forward is is different for different people within mm. muda mm. so they need to resolve that that is a serious issue but i do not see them as a sleeper cell as it as if one day they are if if they are Watching proven this. to be a sleeper cell uh, <laughs> no don't clip this okay no what i'm saying is like you know he said from, it <laughs> uh, from my understanding and from my experience with muda yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't seem th- in that way like yeah, yeah, they yeah. they seem like a completely different set of yeah. uh, issues no i i i of course i mean we just uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of uh, uh, humor to our banter yeah. but i i i of course maybe sleeper cell may be too strong a word but then of course there is a sentiment out there that that perception of muda that is that they represent other powers mm-hmm. like mahate or parikata and fair enough i'll give you an example now when we were contest we also get this label whenever you contest against ph you get this label spoiler spoiler mm. spoiler planned by mahadev there was a video <laughs> hilarious there was a video on uh, social media that look uh, that put sadik's face dr kumar's face mahadev's face together and said are these all like the proxy of mahadev which is nonsense yeah. you know 
So whenever you uh, go up against Pakatan Harapan, and I just say Pakatan Harapan because I've never seen Perikatan do this to us. Mm. Maybe because we are targeting different people. Mm. Um, we get this label of like these people, you cannot trust them because they are not they are not genuine. Mm. You know, they are actually like the proxies of different people. It's a very unfair statement to make. Mm. Mm. I can I can say also DAP is a proxy of developer. I can see mm-hmm. because you know, like in uh, Perai, they put a developer there as a, 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 a replacement of mm-hmm. Ramasamy. I can say that, but we don't because we know that these kind of broad-based statements are populist and they don't really like build up to anything. They're not true analysis. So let's be honest here. Basically, mm-hmm. anyone who runs up against PH is a Mahade proxy, according to PH. Mm-hmm. So we need to <laughs> yeah, be yeah, yeah. a little bit careful in how we define people. So now that we are in the aftermath of the state elections mm. uh, and you guys have a meeting with uh, uh, PSM tomorrow, uh, so we'll be very eager with to Muda see... Uh, sorry, with, with, uh, with Muda tomorrow. Sorry, we'll be very eager to see the uh, the press release that comes out from that and what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, perhaps you could send me a text message. Uh, <laughs> me. I could be the, the one who breaks the news. Um, now, uh, in terms of a coalition... Mm. Uh, if you are unable to form a coalition on the left, mm. why are you all uh, 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 not looking at parties like Party Rakyat, I think, Party mm. Rakyat, uh, PRM, and, and, and looking at Muda? Yeah. Why not form a strong left coalition? We did look at PRM. And that's the thing. We wanted to form a... We always are looking to form a broad-based left coalition, or at least a broad-based centre-left coalition mm. uh, with parties that are interested in forming third forces. Mm. And that includes PRM. Mm. So when we were talking with Muda, we said uh, we wanted to form uh, PSM, Muda, PRM, at least electoral understanding so we don't clash seats. Mm. PRM was not interested in that. And that is the sad part, basically. And I, we don't know why. I don't want to make uh, any assumptions as to why because I do have a soft, soft spot for PRM. You know, they are a Bostamam party, of course. Mm. And uh, I wish to see them coming back to glory. Um, but uh, one thing that really caught me off guard was uh, their, I think their vice president, Azam, mm-hmm. coming up with a statement that says, we reject capitalism and we reject socialism. Okay. That broke my heart. So I, what do they accept? I, Communism. I, I don't know. I, I don't understand. I really do not understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're, they're probably like uh, trying to form a third way or whatever uh, that is not capitalist or socialist. I don't understand. And I don't want to make any assumptions on their behalf. But it broke my heart. Uh, to see that, and it was very unfortunate that uh, we didn't get to uh, work with PRM. But we are still trying. Okay. We're still trying with PRM, we're still trying with Muda, maybe some other parties, you know, maybe parties that are within the Perpaduan government. Who knows? Mm. We will see, we'll see. Uh, on uh, how that goes. La. Okay, so let's take a break from PSM and the left. Let's fo- let's let's dive into your segment. Sure. Uh, your, your, the, the person that you are the chief for, the youth. Now, uh, a, a look at the Bermuda Socialist Instagram account, mm. right? Uh, I see a lot of posts on, uh, not a lot, but but you have posted about uh, one of the the, the the topics that you guys champion is LGBT rights. Mm-hmm. Now, um, is this just you all pandering to a trending topic? Because in Malaysia, M- Malaysian culture behind the scenes is very accepting of LGBT. We are. Mm. Uh, even in our culture, you can see the. even if you look at for us being Indians, you're a Hindu, I presume. So as a Hindu, you you know, we, we even in the Mahabharata, you have a mention of a eunuch, you know, Shikandi. Yeah. Uh, and then if you go to different states in Malaysia, the acceptance of uh, transge- cross-dressers, transgender is there. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not admitted publicly, but it's there. Do you think LGBT is such a big issue here in Malaysia? It is. Because, okay, so we see this kind of acceptance. Yeah. It's not acceptance, actually. It's tolerance. And a lot of it is uh, also taken for comedic factors as well. So if you look at the, uh, the comedy of, uh, of Malaysian comedy, a lot of it is transphobic. You mean, okay, be specific. You mean drag? Uh, drag, uh, drag is one part. Lah. Okay. Uh, drag okay. is one part. Okay. But like uh, other parts like, you know, men being soft, Soft, okay, a feminine um, man. Okay. From a feminine man, uh, what do you call that? The possibility of dating a trans person. Okay, that kind of is played off as a as a comedic factor. So we, so I don't see it as as much as acceptance as it as it is tokenism. Sorry to say, Fair. because um, from the people that we have worked with, you know the uh, trans people that we have worked with in in very progressive organizations in Malaysia, 
I don't want to name them in case like um, there may be some blowback. Yeah, so don't worry, only five people watch my podcast. Yeah, no, it's I just fine. Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm here. Maybe this. it'll blow up. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 this one's gonna go viral. <laughs> so uh, the trans people that we work with, the gay people that we work with, that the lesbian people that we worked with, a lot of them do face. Uh, tremendous amount of oppression especially the trans people tremendous amount of oppression especially even to get work is such a difficult uh, task for for is it yes it is yeah you mean If, for transgender for trans people yeah okay. i know a case where uh, this this person wanted to be a security guard uh, she was a trans woman if i'm not mistaken and she got the job it was a mnc company the union uh, what do you call that rejected her hmm. the union said if we have this trans person in we will protest That's the kind of that's the depth of like uh, of oppression that that uh, trans people face in Malaysia, you know, and you know we see uh, what do you call that a lot of them being sexualized, you know, being like uh, uh, typecast in a certain way mm-hmm. so that they can only be sex workers. A lot of the, a lot of the times it, it happens. We don't admit it, but a lot of the times it it happens in that way, and we work with them. And we're not saying we are against sex workers or anything, but to like not have any other opportunity. That is a that is a thing that we we we. Okay, operate. that's that's a very eye-opening uh, statement mm. for me because I, I I had no idea that trans people yeah. can't even get jobs. Is that is that is that uh, 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 happens to the entire community or just? I wouldn't say it happens to the entire community, but I would say that we've seen a lot of cases where it does happen. Mm. You know where, you know uh, things like uh, not getting not being able to get rent, you know, getting uh, uh, not being able to get a job, being. Openly oppressed, like uh, in 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 normal society, quote unquote, normal society, mm. that all of that happens in Malaysia, uh, and that is shocking. Of course, there are pockets of spaces where you know uh, it's safe, basically. Mm. Like PSM is safe. PSM is always safe for for our LGBTQ comrades. Um, but generally speaking, it is always unsafe uh, in Malaysia to be openly identified as a member of the LGBTQ community. Okay. Especially if you're trans, if you're a trans person, sometimes you can't help it. You know, like uh, your your yeah, uh, people um, judge you based on your appearance, and uh, when that happens, you know, when they are oppressed, and we are against that oppression, that is what we mean by we are in support of them as human beings. You know, of they, course, they 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 deserve everybody to deserves live. the right. Yeah, yeah that, exactly. That, 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 that I completely uh, yeah. agree with. Um, so just to build on that sure. topic, uh, what are, is your and, and and let's take a break from politics for a while. Sure. Uh, let's let's get your views on some topics. Currently, uh, not currently, but perhaps in the past few months, one of the big issues was um, in the U.S. of trans women participating in women's sports. Mm. What is your take on that? If you ask me honestly, uh, I'm not an LGBTQ activist. I I've not I'm not well read in this area. Basically. Mm-hmm. I when whenever like uh, something like this comes up, I defer to my uh, to people who know better. I don't see it as an issue. Such a politician answer. No, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. Like if I don't have an answer for you, I'll say I don't have an answer for you. Fair enough. I, I, uh, I can always say I oppose it and get a lot of people supporting <laughs> yeah, me. Right, yeah, yeah. But in reality, I am in generally in support of uh, of uh, I'll be, I'm on the side of the LGBTQ plus community on this basically. Generally, okay. uh, uh, until I learn more, and maybe there are nuances in the issue. But generally, if you're saying like trans people are uh, con- con- competing in sports, I don't. No, no, not not competing in sports, yeah? but trans women mm-hmm. participating in mm-hmm. women's sports. Okay. So, uh, so, so because recently, I think. Uh, maybe, what is the issue? Maybe you can explain to so, me. So, so yeah. there was this swimmer sure. uh, in the U.S. Uh, who's male, and then decided that he is now he was identified as a woman. And then participated in uh, a woman's, uh, I think NCAA, which is their their college. I think, if I'm not mistaken, college sort of MSS college kind sure, of thing. Sure, sure, like. yeah. And uh, he, I mean, she won by a large gap, right? Uh, beating the first, the 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 number two by a large gap. So this brought an uproar in the community because people are saying that's not fair. How can a man compete with women? Uh, and uh, because of the fact that you are taking the place of other women mm. uh, who have worked very hard to participate in this, uh, uh, in fact, there was one girl who, you know, was training like for many many years because the the top 16 then qualified for the mm. American Olympic team, mm-hmm. but she failed because of this trans woman. So, what is your thought on your uh, your take on this? Okay, so a uh, couple of things. One, uh, if we are saying that people transition. Just for uh, 
spot success if you're coming from that angle to me that is ridiculous because transitioning is is such an involved process basically mm-hmm. you know hrt itself is such an involved process uh so i i don't think that's happening lah in my humble opinion uh but if you're saying that people transition and just so happen uh what do you call that they are swimmers too mm. they want to contest in uh uh what do you call that uh, swimming uh to me i don't really see much of an issue with that and i'll tell you why michael phelps is basically a dolphin yeah 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 he's, so he's, he's a, not human he's not human yeah you yeah. see his body my dear lord exactly. he's made he has for like swimming exactly giant like what do you call that like shoulders Those and big, really long yeah, arms yeah, yeah, yeah. and i he's basically half dolphin right yeah. so uh if we don't see an issue with that no i don't see how we can see an issue with this I, another thing is like there's there was another runner as well who's who was mistakenly identified as trans mm-hmm. she was a woman and she just had naturally elevated testosterone so she was like really built basically mm-hmm. Are we <laughs> where where do we stop with this biological determinism mm. is my question basically mm. so like i think it's arbitrary lah in my opinion yeah i mean but, i but you know again not very well read in the topic no uh, it's fine we're having a discussion sure. yeah yeah no for me i feel that what when i see things like this this is where i feel that these issues sort of cloud the entire lgbtq mm. acceptance mm. they hinder it from happening because Uh, I'm against it. Wholeheartedly I'm against the fact that if a trans woman wants to participate in a women's sport, that is unfair because mm. your bone density, your muscle density is all different and you have an advantage. My when I heard this issue, my thought was simple. If you want to identify as a woman, fine. How about you wear a woman's swimming suit, a one piece and compete against the men? Because biologically you are a male. you cannot run away from that mm. yeah you may identify as a woman and anybody has the right to identify as whatever they want to right so that was where i was sort of my thought about it but i think psm the the youth and your vision seems to be more geared towards more acceptance of lgbt in terms of hiring mm. uh, you know having a normal life mm. without having a hindrance like this example you mentioned about the unions stopping someone from working i think that's ludicrous completely stupid yeah. i don't know how that can happen in 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 our country uh especially with our culture um so what are the other uh main tenets of uh, the youth what 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 else are you guys fighting for free education is one thing that we've uh historically fought for still fighting for uh up until your first degree so that is a core tenet for uh, for us for us it's it's simple uh, education should be available to all high quality free education available to all uh and that shouldn't be an issue where you know like someone is losing out on certain opportunities just because they don't have the money to mm. do so you know that's mm. for us that is unfair yeah it is yeah so uh we want to ensure that uh, uh education is free from uh, tadika up until you get your first degree in university at least mm-hmm. okay uh so that is one of the tenets that we uh fight for uh we are more in the uh, gig economy workers and you know, a lot of them are youths um uh and uh, we want uh, better labor rights for them Uh, right now they are treated as independent contractors and we disagree with that okay we say they are they are workers you know they are workers for grab drivers are workers they're not yeah. independent contractors it's yeah. just that they don't have all the rights to workers and and so they are more vulnerable basically so what are the rights that they don't have uh things like uh if i if i'm not mistaken lah uh the 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 motor is their motor right mm. they're doing grab work with their own vehicle basically mm-hmm. so anything that goes wrong with the vehicle they have to tanggung lah Okay. Yeah, whereas if you're a worker, it's the machinery, the yeah, the machinery is needs to be provided by the company mm. basically. So simple things like that. I one thing that I that I am glad to learn is that Food Panda does ensure their riders the, the Almina tragedy uh, just now mm. we learned mm. from that one of them was a Food Panda rider and he was insured by the company which is at least they do that lah mm. which is good. But we are trying to expand a little bit more onto that, you know, make sure they get overtime labor, make sure uh they they are treated like workers like you know okay uh so that is a precarious work uh, that we are focusing on uh we are also um very interested <laughs> i would say in um uh, championing uh how you say what is it called um jobs guarantee scheme okay so we are stating uh as a matter of fact that the dependence on private entities uh to provide labor at least to provide a majority of labor within malaysia is uh something that has failed basically is a is a and we can see that from our stagnating wage growth 
uh, we can see that from our low uh, participation within unions is only 6% of malaysian workers are unionized by the mm-hmm. way and a lot of those unions are careerists so they don't even know they don't care about the workers that much but uh, what we are saying is if you need a job if you want a job and you are willing to work and you are able to work the state should provide you a job mm. and we are saying there are very there are various different uh, avenues for which we can find labor one of the most important is social work mm. when you when i went to pprs and i learned about um people who've applied for ppr uh, uh houses and did not get it i saw a lot of ppr houses that were empty mm. or a lot of ppr houses that are rented out by the by the uh, the occupant is not the person who got the ppr mm-hmm. house mm-hmm. the ppr house guy rented it out illegal by the way should <laughs> cannot be done okay. but it is done mm. and they are renting it out for 1000 ringgit ppr house 1000 ringgit mm. for all the, the, the cheapest houses you can get mm. and they and the and the people who own it uh, who own the ppr house will have another house elsewhere that is like fancier okay yeah? okay so this kind of thing is happening and when you don't when when people are not there when the when the when the, the when the council is not there to understand these these issues are happening or if the council is also taking some money but let's say the council is unaware uh the council is unaware and putting me uh, in a lot of trouble man <laughs> <laughs> no 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 like no, no no of course we trust gonna, our, we trust our local councils and uh, we next we next podcast is postponed i'll be in MEC <laughs> there we go no so like um when we when the council is not there and they are unaware uh it is very difficult for them to understand what the needs of the people are mm. and how many resources that are available to them okay. so when you put p- people like social workers in there to understand exactly what people need uh what are their troubles sometimes broken um, stairs can be can be a huge issue you know mm. people have fallen down and broken their nose and stuff and the council is not there to know and mm. when they don't know they don't care So when you put the social workers in there at least you can understand where you can uh what issues are are present and you can bring them up in So in this jobs guarantee scheme you you are suggesting that jobs should be created by the state Yes Okay and and in one area would be social one social area work. would be social work you okay. know you have uh, the green economy is another thing the care mm. economy is another thing so mm. that's a little bit different for social work But is is one of the issues with the youth nowadays mm. is that uh they, they are reluctant to get involved in work that is demanding Mhm uh, you know I think if I'm not mistaken they call it the 3D, 3D. Uh, yeah 3D right uh, dangerous for, dirty and Yeah, the D, I can't remember De- Yeah dangerous dirty and demanding I think Maybe la. yeah mm. I can't remember also uh, but um, Is, is is isn't this also an issue uh, whereby there are jobs it's just that the youth refuse to partake in such uh, jobs i disagree okay there are jobs uh, and they are paid really badly that's why the, the that's why people not just the youth actually nobody wants to go and go out and like spend 18 hour days uh, working uh, to clean toilets and then you're paid 1500 ringgit it mm. is <laughs> it is disrespectful first mm-hmm. of all mm-hmm. and it doesn't pay uh, as 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 well as it should mm. for you to even survive so why do we and that's why a lot of our employers uh, compound to that by taking on uh, labor Politics. from uh, from uh, foreign labor mm. and uh, because they know they can pay them these wages and they wouldn't complain mm. some of the times you go to the housing of the foreign workers and you see 10 people crammed into one room you know they won't complain and because you know they won't complain you uh, what do you call it oppress them in this way and you're not hiring uh, what do you call the malaysian workers because there's a ready group to be oppressed so that's mm. that's the thing you see mm. if you want pe- like if if we are saying that the youth are not taking on these demanding uh, jobs pay them more and they will that's that's the only thing that uh, that you need to do if you if you are so like adamant on this pay them 2500 uh, ringgit a month mm. for this uh, demanding job go do it see how many youth uh, will uh, take up the job no fair enough but uh, that, that that's of course one thing but uh, like for example in the in the field of construction for mm. example uh, a foreigner nowadays they earn a lot they they, they you, you can earn like per day 50 60 ringgit even per day mm. uh, for your work uh, some some even more than that 90 ringgit and all that depends on your expertise uh, one of the things and please share your uh, sure. thoughts on this one of the things i've noticed is that because of the current uh, uh uh role played by parents in all in in constantly forcing their children to only target for a few areas to work in mm-hmm. we, i mean 
you being Indian as well, you you should you should be well aware of this. Whereby you have that doctor, lawyer, engineer. Yeah. You know, if you if if you want to start a podcast or something, my God, you're failed in your life. You know. So, but what I think is what I've seen is that, for example, in today, one of the jobs that is lacking but very lucrative, for example, mm. are utility type jobs like mm. like electrician, plumber. Or plumber. Mm. I have a relative of mine who drives a very beautiful BMW just just be, by being a plumber. Yeah. I. I, I pay electricians exorbitant amounts of money to come and to be, and, and they are local, right? Because for me, I always support local market first. I, 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 I'm a Malaysian, I'll support my people first. Mm. So isn't this because of the issue where the youth are not ready to diversify themselves or explore different opportunities? That is why we are suffering now and these, you know, like these areas which are, which, which are ready to be taken advantage of, mm -hmm. right? But they just don't want to because the job is not fashionable. I think I, I would agree with you uh, that the culture of Malaysia is not uh, focused on this kind of TVET jobs. Right? These are TVET jobs, right? skill jobs, jobs yeah. right? basically. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I completely agree that we need to be pushing uh, more youths into that uh, as well. And yes, there, uh, there is opportunities in that. that. That all I agree with. I don't agree with the sense... I don't think peop, uh, the youth are entitled. That's, okay. that, that's my uh, opinion. Uh, I, I share the same opinion. Yeah, so I don't think they are entitled. I think they are facing um, difficult times uh, when it comes to finding work. Uh, our youth unemployment is much higher than the national unemployment. I think about oh, close to 10% actually. 10% of yeah, youth unemployed. Youth, that, that is unemployment. Uh, underemployed is even more, you see. So, wow. uh, so you know, your grab drivers, your uh, food panelists, put them all in together and then you see uh, how many people are actually un uh, unemployed, unemployed. What is the age of this? Sorry, I'm just curious. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, la, don't quote me on this, under 30, if I'm not mistaken. Under 30, yeah. okay. okay. Uh, under 30 and not studying. Okay. So, graduated. La. So, my, op my thing is this, right? We have so many youths who are actually like food panel riders and grab riders and they don't pay that much as well, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are willing to do that, mm. you know. So the willingness of the youth is there. Mm. Yeah, maybe they don't have the skills because, like uh, plumbing, you need skills. Electrician, you need skills. Maybe it is not uh, something that is encouraged mm. uh, within uh, society. So mm. there may be some baggage in that. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't say the youth are only looking for certain types of jobs. Uh, I would say if you pay them enough, they will do anything. Okay. I'm a. I. 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 You know. I. I. I <laughs> studied engineering. I studied yeah, engineering. Yeah. I'm doing project management. Okay. All right. And loads of youths are like that, basically. Okay. Lot of that people means they like study that. something and do something do else. Do something else completely. Because okay. it pays. As, because it pays. It pays. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the thing. You know, like, you know, at the end of the day, job is about money. Mm. Like, that's the, of course, you know, for a socialist, it's a bit more than that. But like in the capitalist world that we live today, uh, the resources that you need to survive no, no, I, I, money. By the way, I, just, to, just to interrupt you, yeah. to interrupt you, but then I, I like that you said that because you're, you're the first realist socialist I've met. <laughs> <laughs> no, like we live in a capitalist world, you know, yeah. and uh, the things that we need to survive is money. So jobs are about money at the end of the day, mm. right? So when uh, when jobs are about money, uh, you pay you pay like what do you call that uh, the youth enough, they will do any job. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. The, but but uh, just just I mean since since we're talking about youth now. Um, I read a recent study, and please correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, that uh, apparently 50% or is it close to 50% of SPM leavers would rather become content creators than join university. Uh, uh, this, I think, was published in Star, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I, I can't remember where I read it. But uh, isn't this also one of the reasons why the youth are so underemployed mm. uh, uh, or unemployed uh, is because they are not employable simply because they are a bit that there is a disconnect between them and the reality because nowadays for example you you hear a lot of terms on the youth like snowflake generation mm -hmm. gen z's are you know impossible to work with uh, companies even have to make their office instagram friendly for to attract the youth uh, is this just because they are not hard working enough they don't have the proper values no i don't think so because and I'll, I'll tell you this instagramming the office giving free pizza that is all not what the youth want. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, who gives free pizza? Uh, the employers. La. Nice. Yeah. No, the, the, rea the reason... <laughs> it's a good time to be working. <laughs> the reason why, uh, what do you call that, they make their office uh, Instagrammable in, in a vague attempt to attract the youth simply because they don't want to pay them more. That's the reality of the situation. You know, mm. Like you can take away all of the pizzas 
You can take away all of the Instagrammable offices. You pay the youth a thousand ringgit more. I guarantee you they'll be happier. I 100% uh, say that. The 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 reality of the situation is we are seeing um, we are seeing so many complaints from the employers of uh, the Gen Z being so difficult to because I'm very proud of the Gen Z because they have finally realized that they as workers have rights. You know, uh, my parents, uh, for example, in their generation, my father had worked in the same company for decades, and they have increase uh, his uh, salary very very little times if he had moved from different companies he would have gotten a much higher salary at the end of the day mm. they would have like uh, given him higher worth of course, you know of gen course. z today are doing that and i'm proud of them because you as a worker <clears throat> you as a worker at the end of the day nobody really cares about no no employer really cares about you you know at the end of the day what yeah, you are to them about, yeah the bottom it, line exactly what you are to them is a resource it's yeah, a resource course, for them to make more money So view them in the same as, way, lah. As like. PSM looks at Muda, uh, I wouldn't say that. As, as I as I view, lah, like, basically. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, if you, uh, I mean, be fair to yourself and view the employees in the same way, lah. Like, they are also a resource for you, mm. you know, for you to increase your uh, All right. income. All right. So if the Gen Z are doing that, I'm proud of them. I'm happy for them, basically. No, no yeah. I, I I I understand what you're saying, and yes, uh, uh, it, it is good that they now know their rights and they they are pretty independent. And of course, we are seeing the death of uh, the culture of staying in one company forever. Even uh, I don't know whether do you watch football? Are you a football fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which team do you support? Used to lah support Manchester United. Perfect, perfect. I love Then this. I you're my you're my favorite guest. <laughs> why, why 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 did you stop? No, I just got I uh, got out of it, and then uh, uh, Ferguson yeah. retired, and I was tired of tired watching. Of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, same here, same mm-hmm. here. I, I I struggle. In fact, they they lost yesterday, so it's okay. a very sad day. All right. But okay. uh, like uh, you know, in football, when I was uh, in 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 secondary school, I remember you could see a lot of footballers who would stick to one club, like mm-hmm. Ryan Giggs and all that. They would stay in one club from the time they started till the end. Now that's a dead thing, lah. Mm-hmm. Everybody leaves for money. Um, but as the saying goes, a gathering stone. Uh, does not collect moss. A rolling stone. A rolling stone gathers yeah. no moss, right? Uh, some, as a person who's also worked with Gen Z, sometimes I feel like while they are moving and they are finding new careers and all that, and they're increasing their 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 earning capacity, their earning uh, earnings from their salaries, sometimes they lack the skills. Mm. They lack the skills that are actually needed for success, such mm. as uh, hard work, persistence, uh, character, loyalty. Uh, these are not taught in school, mm. uh, and these character traits will take you very, very far in life. You can be the smartest man in the room, but the hard worker is going to knock you off your socks, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you can be an, you know. So those type of character traits, I feel, are the side effects of not being, uh, you know, staying in a company long enough to gain your experience and all that. How do you do? You feel the same? Do you feel that Gen Z? Lack the uh, certain traits that the previous generations had. I think Gen Z are just bringing the same energy employees are bringing to workers, and employers are not comfortable with that. Mm. I'm being very honest. Here. Basically, like you know, Gen Z are finally like saying, you know what? I don't have to like get all of these skills for you. You know, I can go to this other company and be paid twenty percent extra. Mm. Why are we mad at that? Why are we angry with that? When employers. Do the same thing, you know. I don't have to employ you. I can employ a foreign worker for twenty percent less. Mm. That's what I'm saying, basically. You know, like the 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 pandemic of like uh, uh, what do you call it, workers uh, without these skills that we see right now, is due to the system uh, creating these workers in the first place. Mm. They finally have woken up to it, basically. Mm. So if you're so, if we are so uncomfortable with uh, the workers that we are creating now, we have to change the system. We cannot ask the workers to change for the employers, you know. Change the way that the employment is even. That's why I'm saying, when we when I, we are pushing for the um, uh, we are pushing for the uh, employment uh, guarantee, mm. uh, guaranteed employment, we want to change the way that people interact with employment in the first place. Mm. For socialists, employment or labor is about. Expressing your uh, your 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 innate uh, humanity, basically, mm-hmm. and creating something that you can um, that you are proud of, that you are that you want to be associated with. Mm. In the world that we have today, capitalist world, 
we are so alienated from the product that we create. At the end of the day, it's only about in- increasing what they call that uh, the wealth of someone else in some other country, basically. Mm. And that's why we are so frustrated. Uh, that's why that's why like what they call that like work is has become meaningless uh, in in a large sense. So Gen Z is waking up to the fact that work is meaningless and employees are meaningless and I don't have to, uh, what do you call that, be so, like, I don't have to kill myself and get all of these, like, different sets of skills to, like, uh, get employable. At the end of the day, I'm going getting paid more. I mean, what so do we expect this, uh, this system to create? Okay, so <coughs> let, let's look at this. And, and this is something that I, I um, in quite a while back, I think this was after 2008 or 2013, the elections. Uh, Dr. Jayakumar. He went on a Chinese uh, uh, news uh, record uh, portal. I can't remember which one it was. And uh, he said that, you know, what we should do is we should look at uh, reducing the work, uh, work hours per week uh, and increasing salary. Mm-hmm. And he was asked a question by the interviewer, uh, basically, how do we achieve this, right? And he, there was no answer given because... And, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not blaming him or pointing fingers at him not being able to answer his own, elaborate more on his own point. But one thing that this sort of mindset whereby employers must pay more will eventually burden the consumer. Mm-hmm. Because we live in a free market and uh, the companies will be burdened to pass on their increase of cost to the, to the, into the product or service. So then we suffer. Mm-hmm. What's your thought on that? When you're talking about, okay, there's, there's many thoughts on this. Like, uh, so I'll focus on one specific thing and then I'll go to a general one. The specific thing is about wages, basically. So we're talking about increasing wages. Wage is only a very small portion of, uh, of the um, price uh, to the consumer. Mm. So when we look at uh, increasing wages, and there are many, many studies on this. Um, uh, so a, a proportional increase of, uh, uh, let's say, 10% of an increase of wages only increases, let's say, the prices by 2%. So generally speaking, you're fine. You know, like uh, you can, you can, you can do this kind of like chasing the. You the, can basically the, mitigate the rise. Right? Mitigate the okay. things, basically. So that's that's just wages, lah. Okay, uh, fine. Enough. But I understand where you're coming from. I, that's why we're saying like um, the system is is faulty because at the end of the day, uh, the capitalist is more uh, willing to not compromise on his profits and uh, see where he can save elsewhere. So mm-hmm. either by Laying off workers, increasing the prices of uh, price, uh, the prices of goods, automation—all of these things are uh, available to the capitalist to uh, save his earnings, all to save his profits. Mm. So, what do we do then? What do what do we? Um, how do we uh, mitigate this problem by not depending on the capitalist anymore? Mm. That's the thing. We have to think about further than just the system that we are in right now. The system that we are in right now is not set up to uh, benefit the worker. The only way we can move forward, and this is where Lenin comes in, the only way we can move forward is owning the means of production. Uh, no, 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 no. Let me, let me explain. Let me explain. Shift, let, let me explain. Like, we, we always get this uh, pushback by people thinking that this is a pie-in-the-sky idea. It's not. You know, it has been done before and we can do it here. For example, we uh, do the um, uh, the jobs guarantee campaign, uh, the jobs guarantee scheme. We are giving jobs to all of the workers, Right. Regardless, okay, mm. everyone is employed, hundred percent employability. Now you're compete. Now the private entity, private um, market is competing against uh, the government to get workers. They need workers at the end of the day. Okay. If they don't get workers, they they're not going to pro- uh, produce anything, right? So they're competing. So what they do, they they can do only the only thing they can do is increase wages or get, get better benefits to the workers. Mm. Immediately we are we are solving issue of like um, wage and uh, benefits. So we proportionally increase, lah. Yeah, but that and that then you and then when you uh, proportionally increase at some point, the capitalist is going to say, "Look, this is going to cost me way too much, and I'm going to leave." Right? Yeah. Government takes over, lah. Take over the factories. No, that's what I mean. You take over the factories. You take over the 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 chunk of like uh, economy that they are having a monopoly over. Don't mm. don't see it as they are providing a service. They see it as they are cordoning off that part of uh, of production away from the ownership of workers. No, I understand all that. Yeah. But it, 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 okay, so this this brings us full full circle back mm. to the question, uh, which I initi- uh, which uh, the point that we were discussing much earlier in this conversation. When a, a, we are in a post COVID nineteen world where the average uh, average Joe mm. is looking to increase his salary, his income, you know, he's trying to survive, he's trying to become more stable uh, in this world. 
when PSM come to the table with such lofty ambitions, and you must understand, the guys are saying, you know, lost ground is lost forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the time of Mahate, we have converted, we have privatized a lot of these institutions. Mm. For us to go back into a system where the state uh, controls production, means of production, puts a lot of instability, brings a lot of things to question, right? Mm-hmm. I, as an individual, also would be concerned for my well-being because I'm saying, hey, I want to earn more money. Why is it that, uh, why, why would I be... You know why should I vote for a party that wants to you know change like like turn turn over the table, mm. right? Sh- shouldn't your focus be more on on practices or ideologies or, or campaigns or initiatives that are more low hanging fruit? Yeah, as That's, opposed to owning state product. Come on, product. no. What I'm saying is, I'm giving you the vision. Yeah, I'm giving you the long term vision, right? What we are building towards, mm. or what we need to build towards, at least. But getting there is not like I get power one day and suddenly like everything changes. The couple of things that I want to point out. One thing is a lot of our economy is still owned by the state actually mm. through our state-owned enterprise. And you'd be surprised if you read uh, Professor Terence Gomez's uh, his book and recently he came to do a presentation. You really see the the <laughs> the cancerous growth of like uh, of these uh, SOEs and uh, how deeply they go into the Malaysian economy. Yeah. Uh, he says, like you know, uh, the the revenue can run in the trillions if you take them all to uh, together. But we leave that as, aside for now, lah. Huh? But it is there. We need to uh, be aware of it. Yeah. What we are saying is, okay, you want a final solution. Everyone, everyone asks us about like uh, a complete solution, and then when we give a complete solution, they say that this is too scary. fanciful. <laughs> this is uh, too scary. And then they say, go back to the low-hanging fruit. And then when you talk about low-hanging fruits, they say, only this you want to achieve? <laughs> that's the thing, you know. Like, th- that's the problem that we're facing. So here's the thing. That, what I gave you just now was a long-term vision, taking okay. over the means of production. Fair okay, enough. The low-hanging uh, fruits uh, that we have right now are the minimum wage campaign, our, uh, our campaign that was successful, employment insurance scheme campaign that was also successful. Now we're doing um, the, uh, what do you call the old age pension scheme uh, campaign. It will be successful. Yeah, we'll yeah. make sure of that. Uh, and then uh, we have the, uh, what do you call that, uh, employment in, uh, guarantee campaign that we will uh, take forward. We have the free education campaign. These are all low-hanging fruit. Mm. These are all achievable goals. In the, in the pathway to uh, the, the, uh, the, the full solution, which is taking over the means of production, the, what you need to realize is this, you know, there is no such thing as reforming the system that we have now to work for us. It has failed. Like it will fail completely multiple times. There is no hope, right? Yeah, so you have recessions and all that. Exactly. Yeah. So the only logical thing, the only practical thing to do then is to think about how we can change the the system. And when I give you a solution of changing the system, it yeah, of course. Me. It's scary. <laughs> of course it's scary. It scares us, of course. But at the end of the day, that is the only thing that uh, that can work. That Because like other <laughs> other ways have not worked. What we are doing right now, of course, is mitigating the the negative impacts of the current system. Mm. You know, uh, that that is your low hanging fruits, right? But if you don't build towards uh, changing the system as a whole, then what what you will always be doing is firefighting. And what I That's want to true. do is prevent That's, fires. I agree. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, before we bring this comes into a close, sure. which by the way I've really enjoyed. Thank I you. really enjoyed talking to you. I hope you've had fun as well. I did. Yes. Thank you. Um, so tell me, uh, what is the future for PSM um, mm-hmm. after the the very poor showing at the state elections? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the future look, looking like for you guys? I think uh, first of all, um, we are not only an electoral party. Uh, we have. We are an organizational based of party. Course, so we course. organize workers, we organize uh, what do you call the orang asli, precarious workers, uh, single mothers, uh, within uh, many groups, and then we put it all into our front called Gabungan Marhain. Mm. So that is a successful um, endeavor that we will continue. That is uh, fixed deposit. Okay. <laughs> now we talk about elections. <laughs> okay, no, because we, we are so used to winning everywhere yeah. that uh, it's, it's very jarring when we cannot win this one thing, which is elections, basically. Okay. So we're used to winning so many cases. Yeah. Uh, so this part we want to address uh, in, in a very serious manner, basically. Mm-hmm. When we look at it, the only way we can move forward is if we form a credible challenge to governments. Okay. Not just uh, pushing the, 
uh, vote for us because we're good candidates or vote for us because we are the third force and we can uh, be the check and balance. That mm. that all people understand, they push aside Yeah. Uh, for the greater narrative. The greater narrative is, can you form government? Mm. So, uh, the next few elections that are going to come, especially GE16, GE17, we need to put up a credible force with uh, our coalition partners, like maybe MUDA, maybe PRM as well, uh, maybe other parties uh, that uh, we have not discussed today. Uh, maybe you want to give us a sneak peek? Uh, uh, Actually, I don't know. Lah, you know, potential. like, yeah. <laughs> don't on, know man. who to trust anymore, you know. <laughs> Suddenly, everyone can, like, work with everyone else. <laughs> yeah, huh? So it's politics. very confusing. Yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe it's PSM. Lah. Maybe, like, PSM contest in all of the seats. That's who knows, what I right? hope happens. Yeah. That's so, what I hope happens. Uh, but I want to give uh, this um, this message. Lah. We are expanding. We will contest in more and more seats. Uh, and we are looking to um, uh, push for forming governments, either state or federal. And when we do that, uh, then people will start to take us more seriously. Mm. And even if they don't, it will still keep expanding. We will grow until you cannot ignore us okay. anymore. Okay, here's the thing. Um, I think, again, this is my opinion. Mm. Um, I think people nowadays have accepted PSM. They have. Right, they have accepted PSM is a political party. They are also an activist group, and they do a lot of good. We've accepted that. The problem is, and this is again another frustrating point with me and PSM. That's why I, when I initially just to just to divert a bit, mm. when I used to come for meetings, eventually I left, mm. not because of anything. I just got so angry, and mm-hmm. you know, and I wanted to do change. I'm very passionate about people, community issues, and all that. But one thing that I feel is a stumbling block or the Achilles heel of PSM is you guys are too rigid Mm -hmm. in in this sense, especially now. Especially now. This is your golden opportunity. It's like England's golden generation, Mm -hmm, you know. mm -hmm. The the you you've you've if this is cricket, the ball has come to you all perfect for a six. You know what I mean? The the electorate are jaded. Yeah. They have lost trust in PH. They voted for PN in the recent elections where PN had a a, a more seats, they they strengthened not because they like PN. But they are disappointed in PH. Everybody is, right? There is a there is a feeling in the air that you know what I voted for you, but you ended up being the same. It's like the it's like the book uh, Animal Farm, right? That's the feeling in such a situation when you have electorate who are just jaded and fed up. This is the perfect time for a party to sweep in and show. Look, we are not like everybody else. Yes, we are a political party, but we have done things. Here's what we have done. Here, here's our our celebrity candidates, so called. Mm. You know, here's our figureheads. You have Bawani, who's a lawyer, who who's in, who's famous for her listen listen video. Who's a very approachable girl. She's a li- girl. Feminist movement now. The woke movement is there. Although okay. I, I I I don't know why that movement is there, but it's there. You have people like you, who's mm. youth. You, you your Dave is going. Why don't you all just be more promotional in your activities? Why don't mm. you all promote yourself? We're trying. That's the thing. Please, I, I try understand. harder. Yeah, you know, I know. I, I, we, know we all want to see the success of PSM. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, like, uh, me more than anyone else, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. we are trying. You know, I, I apologize for being so disappointing. You know, like, uh, I understand. I understand. We are not uh, we are not there yet. But we are getting there. You know, we are trying uh, more and more. You know, Jani makes so many videos of like uh, on on tiktok our social yeah, media uh what you presence has increased phenomenally uh and at the end of the day you know what we but the thing is you see yeah uh, here's where the 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 number of seats that we contest in fits into the thing the larger narrative pushes a lot of this popularity as well mm-hmm. you see mm-hmm. so when you have uh, parikatan pushing the their their form of green wave and then PH pushing their form of anti-green wave, that elevates their status as well, mm. basically. Mm. So that's why when, uh, when I talk about, like, uh, when you talk about electoral success, we have to, like, contest in this many seats. When, okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, in uh, GE16, we are naming 56 candidates, and we are naming a Menteri Besar. Really? If, for example. I'm oh giving my God, example. you're hearing it here an, first. I'm giving an example. <laughs> I'm giving an example. Let's say, GE16, we are contesting 56 seats, we are naming a Menteri Besar. That will push so much of our yeah, narrative, yeah, you know? Yeah. Just this, the simple fact is that, oh, who's your Menteri Basar? What are you doing? What are your plans? Yes, this and that. Yes. That's what I mean, you see. When you talk about, like, um, the, 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 the growth of, uh, of uh, popularity, and we are trying uh, independently as our own, 
but to compete with these big players we need to have a great a grand narrative mm. and that grand narrative can only come if we are if people take us seriously yeah, we are pushing for it yeah, which, and people only take us seriously if we name them besar so maybe really? yes isn't Be- it by the number of seats yeah maybe also in this post electoral world sure. no i mean like what do you call that if we name 222 people name a prime minister candidate oh yeah yeah of course no what yeah, what, yeah, what, what that's what yeah, i mean yeah, you okay. see like we can talk so nicely we can we can push so many things we can prove so many things at the end of the day you cannot form a government they don't take you seriously that means you must form a government lah so, or at least you must okay. uh, put up a put up a, a a front that you can form a government with then people will take you seriously so okay. why do we win in ph because ph can form government no not yes. just that not just that no, people, it's also because people, people are more to pro- change. acceptable to the because you see in ph one key thing y'all didn't win under psm flag pkr flag pkr flag yeah. so when i see things like this people uh, okay again we must have context mm. the ph win and pkr's uh, psm's win under the pkr flag mm. was also driven by the fact that at that time there was a growing sentiment of complete and utter disapproval of bn yes So that's why you guys rode that wave and you won. But another reason is also because and this again another point of frustration is PKR is a capitalist party. Oh, I can't stand yeah. PKR. True, okay? Yeah, it fair. is, okay? Yeah. Uh Anwar is known in the in the in his BN days. Yeah. Come on, let's not let, let's not hide away from that. But you won, your candidate was good. You won because the the approachability of the PKR logo. So when I see this I'm thinking back in my mind that means the only reason why PSM is not winning although they have amazing candidates is because branding yeah that's branding, the only thing branding is money as well right so here i can th- do it for free yeah uh, <laughs> very good thank you <laughs> we'll call you uh so here's the thing here's what i mean right in 2008 uh we were not we were we were not registered to uh to use our logo yet mm, mm. we used the pkr logo because mm. before that we used dp logo lah in mm. uh, in uh, where in sungai siput Yeah. Okay. Mm. So uh, we pinjam logo uh, for a reason lah, basically. But here's the thing: if PKR had only contested four seats, mm. right, and we were one of the four seats, I would, I, I don't think people would take us seriously. People wanted to change BN. They didn't want BN. So what is a credible alternative that can form government that is not BN? Barisan alternative, uh, Pakatan Rakyat, Pakatan Harapan. These are the this this is the thing that is going on, mm. right? So that's what I mean by if you want to be taken seriously as a third force that we are rejecting these these two big behemoths mm. that we don't have to sign a CSA with mm. that we don't have to join later on mm. to form government mm. then we need to project that stance in the, in the number of seats that we are standing in Okay so that means uh, can we as expect and this is my final question for you today mm. uh, because I think I've taken a lot of time sure. but uh, but it's been fun uh, yeah. you had a good time uh does this mean that uh, we can look forward for a third coalition coming pru 16 i'm hopefully yeah but here's the thing we tried in ge 14 uh, gabungan kiri uh that didn't materialize or did not last uh, that long we are trying we've been trying uh, hard as well and we will keep trying tomorrow we're talking with muda we will talk with prm as well maybe other people that we will talk with we'll see what we can do uh at the end of the day uh if not a coalition in uh, the next election which we are trying very hard for and i hope to see it you will see more candidates from psm nice yeah. so if if uh, i'm say in the future if i form my own indian party would you join can i can i depends lah i mean there's already a <laughs> indian party is a mep word, so you can join the no, 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 uh, way the no, multi party uh, for my own <laughs> 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 All right, guys, that's all uh, we've had today. My goodness, an hour and a half long conversation with the very entertaining and very informative, very educated uh, Mr. Arvind. Thank you so much uh, for joining. Thank you. Uh, we wish PSM all the best, the youth. Uh, we are very proud to know the growth of the youth branch and we wish them all the best and we look forward to the news uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, hopefully a new coalition and something new for Malaysian voters. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. Uh, please, uh, we will also share Mr. Arwin's uh, social media handles in the description. So follow him for more updates. And uh, till next time, take care guys. We'll see you. Thanks. Thank you.